Today I'm gonna present the rectangular Michael Sheet antenna. In the present communication scenario, Michael Sheet antenna are becoming popular because of their many advantages, like the low profile, low fabrication cost, and mechanical robustness, easy to curve the surface. Modern communication systems such as cell phones, Wi-Fi are used antennas operating at a definite frequency band. But an antenna operating at a different frequency band simultaneously is more useful and avoids the use of a multiple antennas. In this study, a simple technique has been used by loading a U-slot and placing open studs at the corners of the patch for multi-band operation. And here is the top view of our rectangular microchip antenna. The radiating patch of the lens L and the width are designed for the resonant frequency of 3.5 GHz. A quarter wave transformer of the lens LT and the width WT is used between the CP along the width of the path and the micro sheet line width of the lens LF and the width WF for matching their impedance. The conventional rectangular micro sheet antenna and the proposed U slot rectangular micro sheet antenna are fabricated on a low-cost glass epoxy and substrate materials of the thickness of H of 0.166 cm and a loss tangent of 0.01 and epsilon is 4.2. Two open studs are at the diagonal opposite corners of the antenna with the dimension XD and YD. The U slot is placed symmetrically about the center of the on the pad. The horizontal arm length UH and the vertical arm length U of the U slot are taken as lambda over 6, where lambda is the free space wave length in centimeters, corresponding to the design frequency of 3.5 GHz. The UW is the width of the horizontal and vertical arms of the U slot. After the calculation using the provided formula, we got the following result. The transmission lines model is applicable to infinite ground planes only. However, for practical consideration, it is essential to have a finite ground plane. It has been shown that the finite ground plane can be obtained if the size of the ground plane is greater than the patch dimensions by approximately 6 times the substrate thickness all around the periphery. Hence, for the, this design, the ground plane dimensions we obtain would be uh, 50 by 80 centimeters. In our simulation, the yellow ground plane are the substrate, the purple is the antenna, the excitation point is the at the end, the excitation point will represent the call outside cable providing a high frequency signal into the antenna. Here is how we approach our design. First, we initialize our antenna parameters. We made the substrate to be 50 by 80 cm. The patch antenna is the area where the antenna will lie in. We use add poly function to create our rectangular patch by dividing up into three parts for our convenience and eventually we combine all three parts into one and got our shape we wanted. 
for FDT parameter, we create a mesh for simulation data. Mesh generation is the practice of generating a polygon or polyhedra mesh that approximates the geometric domain to the highest possible degrees of accuracy. The term grid generation is often used for rendering into a computer screen for or for physical simulations such as finite element analysis or computational proof dynamics. The triangular zone in the map shown indicates the points in the grid where the current distributes is concentrated. After setting up the simulation space, we, we can now define the shape of the antenna. By using the add polygon class, we can define point in R3 that represents the shape of our antenna. Since we are using a flat antenna, we simply ignore the Z component, setting it into zero by moving from point to point. A polygon structure is created. The start and stop parameters represent the area of which our antenna resides in. The built-in MATLAB optimization toolbox is used. The optimization toolbox is a graphical user interface for built-in function, which is the optimization software for constraint problems. The equations for calculating the EMF are input into the optimization's parameter in the form of a MATLAB function. The function calculates the sum difference between the EMF from the actual position and the measured position. The function is basically a measure of error. Lower and upper boundaries of solution are specified, as the position coordinates can only be within the boundary of the human body itself. The add box function will then introduce our subject into a simulation environment. Finally, we have to define our ground plane. We simply define it as a perfect conductor located just underneath the subject. <coughs> now we begin to create the excitation on antenna. The add long port function defines an excitation with the resistance uh, and a voltage. We then use it to apply varying the frequencies into our antenna. After this, we can finalize the defined object and set it up for simulation. After defining a simulation space, we prepare to export our data to OpenEMS. We prepare the directory for our subscript to write to. Then we show our structure to the user using the CSX geometry file. After this, we can run the OpenEMS to get the data result. The graph shows that the return loss versus frequency of the antenna. From the figure we can see that the antenna resonates at 3.39 GHz, which is close to the design frequency of 3.5 GHz. The inset feed use is designed to have an inset depth of 1 mm, I mean 1 cm, feed line with width of 4 cm and a feed path length of 33 cm. The antenna operates at a frequency of 1.779 to 1.851 GHz for bandwidth 1 and 4.53 to 4.72 for bandwidth 2 and 5.83 to 6.1 6 GHz. The experimental bandwidth is calculated using the formula bandwidth equals to F2 minus F1 divided by Fc times 100% where F2 and F1 are the upper and lower cutoff frequency of the resonating band when a return loss rate reach 
negative 10 dB and Fc is the center frequency between the F1 and F2. The bandwidth of the antenna is found to be 3.7%. From the detailed study, it is clear that the operation of an antenna can be achieved through the design of a U-slot rectangular microchip antenna, which is constructed from the conventional rectangular microchip antenna. The antenna operates between 1.815 to 9.01 GHz at different, at different frequency bands with the virtual size reduction of 44% and gives a broad side radiation characteristic at each operation at each operation band. <coughs> By placing a use lot and open stops at the corner, the copper area of the patch is reduced by 8.5% when compared to the copper area of a conventional rectangular microchip antenna. The experimental result of the return loss versus frequency of proposed antenna are in good agreement with the simulation result. The proposed antenna are simple in their design and fabrication and they use low cost substrate material. Detailed experimental study can be taken up at a later stage to find out a design procedure for better balanced antenna.